don't think that looks right. business centers and today we're going to talk about capability statements. American Small Business Centers has been doing capability statements for its clients for many many years. They've developed a almost fail-safe, very 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 easily read, very very easily understood format for making these capability statements. A capability statement is a document that's normally required by businesses that you're trying to do proposals to it's definitely required by the government if you're doing any kind of request for proposal uh, submission that you have out there. Remember, your capability statement is not a data dump and it is also not something that's designed for you to actually make a sale. It's designed for you to process and give information that people are looking for. It needs to be very simple, it needs to be very clean, it needs to be it needs to have the data in it that people are looking for and not a lot of other spurious, salesy, smooth talk type items, okay? The basics for any capability statement, you have to identify who you are, what you are, how to get in contact with you, okay? A lot of people actually don't put that on there for some strange reason. I'm not exactly sure why. It needs to be one, maybe two pages, front and back, one piece of paper at the most. The other thing it needs to have in it is the information that large businesses or government entities need. It needs to have your NAICS code. It needs to tell people what your capability is. It needs to have anything in there with, that would be kind of a product code. It needs to have anything in there that would be a certification, hub zone, an already owned business, woman owned business, anything like that. And it needs to be in a very easily scannable, findable format. You can put things in there such as pictures of things that you have built. I have a steel company. We put pictures of the steel fabrication that they had done in there. Um, I have a, um, a, a paper company that we use. They actually would use a capability statement to go after things they would be printing for larger corporations. So they would attach samples of what it is that they have done. But they had to have in there all the different things that they did for making printed products and how they did it, the machinery that they had, because that's what people are looking for, okay? And finally, in most instances, particularly if you're going to like a business expo, your capability statement is being taken by somebody who is not the buyer. It's a buyer's representative, but you don't go in there and waste their time trying to make a sale to people that don't have the final decision. You go in there, you ask, here's my information, whom should I get in contact with in your organization to follow this up or pursue this further? And that's it. That's all you do with your capability statement when you're sitting there presenting it to different people. Okay? The rest of your proposal, the rest of your reply, the rest of the things that you would submit that would be required by any corporation or any government entity, those are the things that will be done in addition to your capability statement. Remember, the capability statement needs to be clean, clear, and precise. Here at ASBC I have a graphic designer that I work with. We will create your capability statement for you. I have a format that we'll use. I have information that I would need to get from you in order to do that. The cost is $250 and we'll send you the proof of the thing in a PDF and you can have it printed at a professional print uh, office at your leisure. So Again, my name is Tom Lunny. If you have any information or any questions about what you want to do with your capability statement, get a hold of us at info at americansmallbusinesscenters.com and I will be more than happy to sit here and address your questions. So please let me know if you found this informative and if there's anything that I can do for you. Thank you.